work because it's no longer as simple as researching neo-Nazis and white nationalists in her neighborhood. You know, she honestly didn't know what to do about suburban moms who seem to have been radicalized over issues like kids wearing masks at school. Um, and so that's interesting. The researcher didn't know what to do about suburban moms who are radicalized over wearing masks at schools. Well, maybe the researcher should do research and not try to tell moms what they should do. <laughs> Does the researcher have any medical training? Maybe. Or is there just a falling in line, peer pressure, do what you're told to do, mentality. The United States enshrined rebels, right? We had the Redcoats and the rebels, and the rebels are our good guys, right? Then we had the Yankees and the Rebels, and those Rebels were the bad guys. And then we had the Empire and the Rebels, and those were the good guys. Princess Leia and the men she got to help her. So, in Western tradition, in Western society, which is built upon a particular understanding of the Hebrew Bible and a particular understanding of the New Testament and medieval systematization, systematic thinking. So we've got a version of Hebrew, a version of Greek, a systematized way of thinking combining ancient Greek and the New Testament Greek medieval early modern commerce Protestant Reformation meaning don't tell me what to do right all mixed together and now we've got scientism and people who are in scientism don't know that they're in scientism. And that's okay because the name isn't what they're into. What they're into is the belief that there is an overarching and complete vision of the world. And a scientist knows that that's constantly changing. Meaning that what's accepted today may or may not be right. Right? It may or may not be right. And blindly doing what people tell you to do without knowing what you're talking about, what they're talking about, and knowing full well that they don't know what they're talking about is not science. Science is the evidence that is reproducible. And yes, there are hypotheses that have evidence. And wearing a mask at school makes a lot of sense because we breathe in and we breathe out and we believe that these little things called germs which of course is not a technical term right it's all different kinds of germs but these little things called germs live in air live in water droplets that come out of our mouths and some people want us to wear masks in schools and other people just don't want to be told what to do. If we wrapped our children in bubble wrap, 
they probably would get less abrasions and less contusions. I don't know how tight the bubble wrap would have to be to get less broken bones, but yes, it would keep them safer than if we didn't wrap them in bubble wrap. But if we didn't drive, we would save a lot of lives. And nobody's telling people not to do that. We're being told to feel guilty because we drive. But we're not being told to take the bus or take the train. So we know that there are solutions to the problems we have. But we have an underlying distrust of the mainstream narrative. And if a suburban mom does not want to be told by someone who's never met her child that her child should wear a mask, is that radicalization? I think radicalization might be somebody who's not a parent telling a parent how to parent. That might be radical. That might be new. That might be why there's pushback. We've always had laws. People have always had laws. And I've gotten quite used to some laws that have been in place my whole life. But whenever there's a new one, I'm not used to it, right? And we are not used to masks. It's pretty simple. We're not used to masks. Some people don't like to be told what to do. And a mother with her child, unless, you know, she's encouraged to, to kill it before it's born. A mother with her child is a very strong bond. Hopefully, usually. And these suburban moms don't want to be told what their children should be doing. Logically speaking, there'd be less sickness if everybody wore a mask. But how many times are we told and do we believe that if we play in the dirt we build our immune system we're being treated like a herd but part of that training is we're not allowed to recommend herd immunity but don't we all believe in herd immunity even if we don't believe in that, even if we don't recognize that phrase, we all know that we get used to whatever's happening. So you can call it education, you can call it radicalization, you can call it and pretend like it's good or bad, but whatever we get used to, whatever we get acculturated to, whatever we, whatever we synchronize into our worldview, becomes less sensational and becomes more normal. And that includes people telling us what to do, and that includes what we wear, including masks. Whose job is it to decide if a child wears a mask? Your child does get to go to the drawer or the closet and decide what to wear a lot of times. But at a certain age, they don't get to decide what was put in the drawer, what was in the closet hanging up that they could choose from. They're not the one shopping, but the mom usually is. And do we want anybody, the HOA, the community organizers, the neighborhood watch, 
the council members, the townspeople with their pitchforks? Do we want anyone telling us what we can bring into our home that our children need to wear? If you think pushback against any of that is radical, then I don't think you're recognizing the fact that people have always been people, mothers have always been mothers, children have always been children, and yes, we step in line all the time to certain things, and we have resistance all the time to other things. Education and radicalization just depend on if you think what you're learning is good or if what you think someone else is learning is good or bad. People who go around, go around. People who spend their time telling other people that they're wrong may be correct. But do you have the right to tell other people what they should do? Well, the mother has the right to tell her kid what to do to a certain degree as the kid is growing up. But who has the right to tell the mother whether she's suburban or not what to do? So these little snide comments that suburban wives aren't as smart as professors. I don't know, have you met a professor? All right, so there's your, I'm equating professor with researcher in this instance. So it's interesting, it's interesting. And the idea that you have to do what anybody else is telling you is abhorrent to some people even though they are doing it to some degree. Wearing masks is new. There's pushback. Is anybody really surprised? Or are they just encouraging peer pressure and pretending like they're surprised so that more people will do it? And if everybody do it, did it, what would the problem be? I don't know. All right. So there you go. There's another episode of Driving Perilously and Talking. This time, turn the radio on, heard a little snippet of NPR. If you don't think NPR, National Public Radio, is pushing a national agenda, okay, just think about it though. <laughs>